Do you know guys how much application you use throughout the day? It could be social media platform, OTT platform, streaming platform, online multiplayer game or any other. From each of them, there is very high chance that those applications are using distributed computing in some way. So in this video, we're gonna see what is distributed computing and why we need that and how it works. So let's get started. Just few decades ago, big tech giant companies are struggling to manage 5 MB data. And this was a long journey from a room size machine to a tiny SD card. But also, earlier people are happy with their device storage capacity. But now, they become a data factory who is generating data day and night. In the last few years, our data generation rate increases immensely. But now, the bigger problem is, how to handle such a huge amount of data. So initially the basic idea is to increase the configuration of one machine, which basically means to scaling it up vertically. But that we can do only at certain extent. And why so? Because in one machine, there is always a limit. You can't go beyond that. So to solve this problem, distributed system take entry. So what is a distributed system? So in order to understand the distributed system, let's take an example. Suppose you have 600 boxes and you have to load them up into a loading vehicle, which is going to deliver these boxes to their end users. So you have time window of one hour. So within an hour, you have to load all 600 boxes to load them up into this transporting vehicle. Suppose you are taking one minute to load these two boxes into this loading vehicle. So with that speed, we will end up by just only loading 120 boxes in one hour. So it is a bottleneck for us. But what if we have four more guys with us? Then we can finish this task in one hour because each guy will take 120 boxes and five people together will load all 600 boxes in one hour. So similarly, the distributed system also work. So it is a collection of nodes. Wait a minute, what is a node? So node is nothing but just a computer unit which have their own resources such as memory, processing unit and their own clock. So each of the nodes are connected with each other in a same network, no matter where they are geographical location wise. So each of the node have their own responsibility to finish their assigned task. So even though these nodes are processing their data individually, but still for their end user, this entire system look like a single coherent system. So with the distributed system, it enables the power of distributed computing. So in the distributed computing, you can process entire huge data to split into chunks and just share it across to different different nodes which are linked together. So they can make call or communicate with each other and process those chunks of data individually. And when they get calculated entirely, it will get aggregated or just show the final outcome to you through some interface. So let's see the types of distributed computing. Well, it's depend upon the perspective. But if I talk about the field wise, so these are divided into three subfields, which are cloud computing, grid computing and cluster computing. And each one of them have a huge contribution into industrial applications. So let's talk each of them one by one. Let's start with cluster computing. So cluster computing is a group of computer where each of the systems connected or linked together. Here, all the nodes are homogeneous so that it would be more faster and because it don't require any interpretation between and uh, these nodes are linked together in a same place which reduce the communication cost and that's why it is more performance oriented and it works in a private network and because of that it is more secured so now let's talk about grid computing grid computing is also very similar to cluster computing here we added some more flexibility in the system where the first one is we remove these homogeneous systems and uh, instead of that any systems or any group of system can belong to different different hardware and softwares and the other thing is also we have removed this centralized system and instead of that any systems or any group of system who want to contribute from different different location they also can participate in that and because of that it reduces the cost so very common example for grid computing we saw last year's uh, which is provided by SETI SETI is a research center who analyze radio signals searching for sign of extraterrestrial intelligence 
until March 2020. It was run as an internet-based public world inter computing project that employed the Bionic software platform and it is hosted by the Space Sciences Laboratories at the University of California. Okay, so the last one is cloud computing and we all aware about this cloud computing because we are using this in our daily routine. So it also provides the computing which is hosted over the internet so anyone can make use of it. Especially when it comes to IoT devices then it would be more easy to use cloud computing which give the accessibility from anywhere and cloud computing provides high availability and high reliability in a very low cost. It also uses heterogeneous systems. So cloud computing offer their resources for different different computing. These are infrastructure as a service, platform as a service and software as a service. So all this type belongs to distributed computing. Let's take a final look. So cluster computing uses centralized system whereas grid computing and cloud computing uses distributed system and cluster computing uses homogeneous nodes and because of that it is little costly as compared to grid computing and cloud computing whereas grid computing and cloud computing uses heterogeneous systems and uh, cluster computing uses private network and because of that it is more secure and grid computing also uses private network but also it provides access to other private network and cloud computing is completely available on public network and because of that it provides high availability. So guys that's pretty much about this video. So today we have learned what is the distributed system and how distributed system works, what is the distributed computing and types of distributed computing. So bye guys thank you so much for watching this video and please do comment below if you have any query. We'll try to answer your queries and share this video with your friends and hit the like button and subscribe guys if you didn't subscribe it yet. And once again, thank you so much to stay with me till the end. See you soon.